have so many Bluetooth devices in my life. So then why the heck are they always such a nightmare to use? Bluetooth is so nice in theory. Since all your devices have it, they just should work naturally together. Your TV, phone, laptop, headphones, all living in harmony. But despite that optimistic ideal, my Bluetooth mouse is laggy, my headphones drop in audio quality randomly, and turning on my car automatically connects to a phone. Whose phone? Who knows? The other day, I was jamming along to some music on my earbuds like I usually do when I get a call from Jake. Wouldn't you know, as soon as I accept the call, suddenly the audio quality dips so bad you'd think the music I was still listening to was being broadcast to me via ham radio. How is it that after being around for 25 years, Bluetooth has gone from Time Magazine's best invention of the year to an absolute mess? Turns out, the answer is way, way, way more complicated than you'd expect. But my goal is simple. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this Bluetooth business, figure out why it sucks in the first place, and at the end of it all, hopefully know exactly what to look for when buying Bluetooth devices so this never happens to me or you ever again. Now our old friend Wikipedia has our first clue front and center. Bluetooth is a short range wireless technology standard that is used for exchanging data between fixed and mobile devices over short distances. There's a key word here that's important, standard. Whenever there's a standard, there's someone deciding what that standard is. Bluetooth is managed by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, also known as SIG, which has more than 35,000 member companies. 35,000? How do you get 35,000 anything to agree on one thing? This next part though, is where that big first clue is hidden. To use Bluetooth wireless technology, a device must be able to interpret certain Bluetooth profiles. That might sound unremarkable, but as it turns out, that tiny mention of profile hides within it an entire rabbit hole itself. Now, what is a profile? Da -da -da. Yet another standard. <laughs> there's a fitness machine profile, there's electronic shelf labels, fax machines, headsets. Now, to avoid going clinically insane already, let's narrow the problem down by looking at just headphones. Headphones mainly use this Advanced Audio Distribution Profile, or A2DP. It's a profile for distributing audio. 25 years ago, in the age before Bluetooth, Bluetooth, headphones were just speakers you put to your ears to hear things, like music or talk radio. Baba Booey, the kids used to shout. Now though, they're not just headphones. We use them to take phone calls, we use them to skip to the next song, and we want them to cancel out the three weeks of straight construction that's happening outside the office right now. So then, which one of those thousand Bluetooth profiles do they use, you might wonder? Well, they don't just use one. They use a bunch. <laughs> Why do they do this? When you listen to music, you're using the standard music listening A2DP profile, but let's say your phone starts ringing and you accept the call on your headphones, you now have a headset, which switches to the headset profile. That sounds an awful lot like my call problem from earlier. And if this isn't complicated enough, it isn't even the headset profile, it's actually the hands-free profile, because apparently that is very different and not totally the same. The headset profile was originally for those straight up Bluetooth headsets that weird business dudes used to wear on their ears, but the hands-free profile came on the scene with its shiny new abilities later, being intended for car stereos. So it covers way more features like voice controls, call waiting, redialing the last number. That's why it became the standard with the latest hands-free profile update coming in 2023, while the headset profile hasn't been touched since 2005. That was. 20 years ago, hmm. But to add a final layer of confusion, headphones still need to support the headset profile. Why? Compatibility. It needs to work on a device from 2004 just as much as it needs to work on a device from 2024. While you're out there tinkering with your Bluetooth devices in your car, there's another easy upgrade that you can do with your car, and that's with LastFit. Car mats are sponsor for this video. LastFit makes high quality floor mats that protect your car from pretty much anything, whether it's children, pets, or the weather. This is a great upgrade for the entire family too. They're easy to clean, which is super convenient for people who are busy troubleshooting their tech or working a full-time job. Between commute picking up the kids and going out to tech stores, you probably don't have a ton of time to clean your floor mats. So having mats that are easy to clean is a huge bonus. You don't even have to go to places. You just take them out at home and hose them down, then you set them out on your lawn to dry, and boom, you've got like new floor mats again. That's right, no more elbow grease, no more high suction vacuums, and because they've got deep grooves, even the biggest spills won't end up damaging your car. They're built to last a lot longer than normal mats because they're made of TPE, you won't see any 
nasty splits or curling that the rubber mats get. And on hot days, these mats don't smell bad either. Choosing the right ones is easy too. On the Last Fit website, you just select your car make and model and then choose which ones you want. They've even got a cargo mat, which is my number one favorite. Before I got one, there was zero protection in my trunk. I had had pet hair from hauling the dogs around and spills from going to grocery stores. But now it feels protected even from the worst grocery shopping accidents. To get one for yourself, go to Last Fit in the description and choose your model. It's that easy. Right now, use code SC20 to get 20% off your purchase. Now this is Bluetooth's first big problem. For every new improvement on Bluetooth, you add one more profile and every new profile needs approval by Bluetooth SIG. Now having backwards compatibility is great for making sure things always work. But as I'm starting to realize, also makes keeping up with this version house of cards a complete nightmare. You couple that with a slow crawl of bureaucracy where new standards can take years to roll out and you find yourself trying to figure out what version everything has and advertisers doing their best to be vague about it all. Those profiles are only one piece of the puzzle. They're basically software versions loaded onto devices devices depending on what they need. The higher level concern is with the Bluetooth hardware version. The word version here is starting to lose all meaning to me. We just need to get some new lingo in the house. Basically, the actual hardware a Bluetooth transmitter a given device has can also vary. Your phone from five years ago might have Bluetooth 4.0, while the newest phone has a 6.0 chip. It's like comparing USB 2.0 with 3. They physically cannot do the same thing, regardless of what software you install. Now, the Bluetooth SIG has been content continually updating Bluetooth's hardware over the years. Currently, they're on 6.2. Now, these versions have massive improvements. You've got better audio, better mouse polling rates. You can find a device down to within an inch of its location. And yes, they even fix the phone call quality, but the technology released needs time to catch up. So your brand new laptop with the latest and greatest Bluetooth card, it might be the latest Wi-Fi 7, but it can only do Bluetooth 5.4. That's the case with my framework laptop here and with my new MacBook Pro M4. So what's the deal with that, Apple? Your iPads have Bluetooth 6.0. What's with that favoritism? This brings us to Bluetooth's second big problem. Just because your fancy new earbuds have Bluetooth 6.0, doesn't mean the other device you're connecting them to does as well. So if you want to actually use Bluetooth 6.0 with all the new fun features, you're currently limited to just a handful of brand new phones, tablets, and then some sketchy third-party dongles. Unless your other device is equally new and fancy, your Bluetooth is stuck with the weakest link of the two falling back to the older device's version. Now on top of that, not every profile has been updated to use these latest improvements. If you're taking a call on your headphones and they switch over to hands-free, you're gonna have a connection downgraded to Bluetooth 4.2, which was released all the way back in 2014, and you will be able to hear the difference. This is a lot of information, I get it. It's overwhelming. I've been reading forum posts, press releases, and documentation for weeks now researching this. But will I remember which version of hardware I'm using, or profile version, or software version when I'm shopping? Probably not. So what is the solution? Well, the first and most obvious solution, make sure that both your devices are up to date with a high level new chip. This will theoretically solve a lot of the problems. But of course, in a video where I've had to use the phrase governing body multiple times, it can never be that simple. Take the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, for example, which have a relatively new profile called T-Map. Telephone and media audio. That fancy old hands-free profile sounds like a tin can underwater by comparison. But despite the Galaxy Buds having Bluetooth 5.4, even if you have a matching 5.4 device to connect them, the device itself might not support this new team map. Look at this nice dedicated 5.4 dongle. They've listed all our supported profiles and team map is not there. Now, if you didn't know to check that, you'd buy this dongle not knowing that you're just falling back to the old hands-free profile the whole time. And then you're doing an hour of research scrolling through product manuals. And if that's not your jam, there's still hope. If you just simp for a corporate overlord, you can make use of all the non-standard or experimental stuff you want. There's a reason you don't hear many people complaining about wireless Apple devices, despite them also using Bluetooth. Apple AirPods work really well when paired with an iPhone or an iPad or a MacBook because they're using secret sauce custom Bluetooth chips. They aren't the only proprietary corporate overlords though. Xiaomi's been working with Qualcomm on their recent Xiaomi 15 phone and their Buds Pro 5s to use 
use Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. Supposedly, you can go anywhere in your home's Wi-Fi network and still stay connected to your phone. How cool is that? Most interestingly of all, Huawei in China has been working on their own outright replacement for Bluetooth entirely. Originally called Green Tooth, now called Nearlink, it's a combination of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that promises microseconds of latency instead of milliseconds and the ability to handle way more devices and lower power consumption. The Huawei FreeBuds Pro 5 claimed to deliver 16 megabits per second of lossless audio when paired with a compatible Huawei phone. Lastly, and this might seem like a cop out, but maybe if none of those solutions sound good to you, the true answer is to avoid Bluetooth entirely. Just use wireless dongles. It might not be visually appealing to have a dongle sticking out of your phone or tablet, but dongles are a solid way to make your devices just work. For years now, keyboard manufacturers and mice manufacturers have used 2.4 gigahertz dongles to get around Bluetooth. These dongles can do things like improve polling rate to bring response times down, making them almost as good as being connected via a wire. You don't have to worry about pairing either. It does it by itself. So you get all the benefits of the cable, but none of the cable part of the cable. But then of course you lose the cross compatibility devices that comes with Bluetooth. And that's not to mention that not every device has a USB counterpart. So then what are we to make the poor confused stepchild that is Bluetooth. The good news is new features coming to Bluetooth do seem to be finally catching up. Features like mice not lagging anymore, phone calls sounding better than radio. These are improving fast as the years go by. But at the same time, they seem more interested in promoting this thing called AuraCast for broadcasting Bluetooth to multiple sets of headphones than to anything more widely cared about by people like me and you. So yeah, Bluetooth is getting better, but even the cool new tech coming from all that still hasn't managed to solve the most fundamental problems with it all. So until we find ourselves in a world where Bluetooth version control is streamlined and simplified while also maintaining backwards compatibility, I think we might simply be stuck checking version numbers or reverting back to USB for now. So maybe Huawei will save us all with Nearlink. Thanks to LastFit for sponsoring this video. To get one, go to the link in the description below and find your car model. Remember to use code SC20 to get 20% off too. Anyways, I hope you learned a lot about Bluetooth because I sure did. Bye.